Hi everyone. This will be the last video for this short series on factorization of polynomials. In this video we're going to look at the rational root theorem. The rational root theorem is used uh, sort of as like a extension of the factor theorem. Um, it's mainly used when we're trying to find factors of non-monic polynomials. Okay. When in the last video we said if you've got a monic polynomial, then you don't need to worry about using the factor theorem, uh, sorry, the remainder theorem. Um, you don't have to worry about using multiple values of beta. Okay, we just said that beta is allowed to be equal to one and then you only have to test different values for alpha. Okay, so you could do that. Like let's say you've got this polynomial here, p of x equals two x cubed minus x squared minus x minus three and you're only testing the values of alpha. So you could test p of one, you could test p of negative one, you could test p of three and you could test p of negative three. All right, and you'll notice that none of these are going to give you an answer. None of you, none of them are going to give you an answer of zero, sorry, and that means there are no factors of that form. Okay, so that means x minus one is not a factor, x plus one is not a factor, x minus three is not a factor, and x plus three is not a factor. So what we're gonna to have to start doing is trying different uh, values of beta as well. Okay, so the question is, what fractions do we use in our substitution into our polynomial? What fractions do we use in our remainder theorem? And how do we get those fractions from the polynomial? Okay, so we're gonna to have to do P of, you know, one over something. We're gonna to have to do P of three over something. Okay, the question is, what is that something? What is that beta value that we've got to use now? So the rational root theorem, it's pretty verbose. Okay, there's a lot of technical language in here. But basically it says, if you're gonna find a factor of a polynomial and the factor has this form here, then that means the value of beta is a factor of the leading term coefficient. And just like before, the value of alpha is a factor of your constant term, okay? So the way that you determine different values of alpha doesn't change. Alpha is going to be just the factors of the constant term, but now we have to start introducing values of beta, which are factors of your leading term coefficient. All right, so let's look at this um, cubic again. So according to this rational root theorem, if we're gonna try and find a factor for this uh, cubic, then we need to use the following combinations of alpha and beta. So beta, uh, remember we're, we're finding factors of the form beta times x plus alpha. Okay, beta could have possible values of the factors of this, okay, which are positive one, negative one, or positive two, negative two. In fact, we don't even need to worry about the positive, uh, sorry, the negative parts of them, okay? We can just say that beta is going to be equal to one or two. Okay, because the negatives, they come in when we determine the values of alpha anyway. So we don't have to include the negatives for the values of beta because they're going to um, pop up when we use the, the positive or negative versions for alpha as well. Okay, so you only need to consider the positive factors of that leading term coefficient. Those are the possible values for beta. Alpha is done in the same way as before. Okay, alpha is just the possible uh, factors of negative three. In this case, positive negative one, or positive or negative three. Okay. Now, because we already tested uh, in our imagination, and you can test this yourself, that these combinations don't work. Okay, these combinations, one, negative one, three, negative three, they don't work. And they correspond to the combinations of alpha being positive or negative one and beta being one, or alpha being positive or negative three and beta being one. So we already know that that value for beta does not help us at all. So what we have to do is now look at the other values of beta, which in this case is just two, and try those fractions instead. Okay, remember we're using uh, 
values of the form negative alpha over beta in our remainder theorem. Alpha could be positive one, negative one, positive three, negative three, corresponding to the numerators in these fractions. And the value of beta that we're using is just two, okay, corresponding to the denominators in those fractions. And so what you would do is you would try and go for P of one over two and see what you get. If it turns out that it's a zero, then that tells you that alpha is equal to negative one and beta is equal to two. That combination of alpha and beta works. And that would tell you that two X plus one, oh, sorry, two X minus one is a factor, okay? If it turns out that P of negative three on two works, then that tells you that, well, alpha is three, beta is two. And so the factor two times X plus three works as well, okay? So your job is to use this rational root theorem and try and find the fractions that you'll be using in your remainder theorem to find that special remainder of zero and then translate that into a factor if it does turn out to be zero, okay? So here, here's one question, and I'm not gonna do this completely because it's gonna take a million years. I already did it in my book and it took me 20 minutes just to get through this one question because it's very tedious if we do it properly, okay? But the main thing is we're trying to find the fractions that we're gonna be using in our remainder theorem, okay? So we're always gonna be using fractions of the form negative alpha over beta. If we're trying to find a factor that has the form beta x plus alpha. Possible values of beta will just be the uh, factors of your leading term coefficient. So we could use one or we could use three for beta. And we don't worry about negatives for beta. We only worry about negatives for alpha. All right, the possible values for alpha are the uh, factors of our constant term, which is negative five. So we could have positive or negative one or positive or negative five, okay? So all the list of all the fractions that we could be using that have the form negative alpha over beta, I will list as follows. So alpha could be one, beta could be one. Uh, alpha could be negative one, beta could be one. Alpha could be negative five, or oh, sorry, alpha could be five, beta could be one, or alpha could be negative five and beta could be one. Now we just do the same values for alpha, except now we have a beta value of three. So we could do one over three, negative one over three, five over three, or negative five over three. So what we have to do here is now substitute each of these uh, fractions into our polynomial and figure out which one of those are gonna give us a remainder of zero, okay? Now, as it turns out, and you can try this yourself, you try and work it out by hand, especially when we get to these uh, denominators of three, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work. All of them do not work until we get up to the last one. And that's why I don't wanna go through and test every single one of these fractions to check whether or not they work because we'll be here forever. So I'll just show you that this last fraction here does in fact work and how that translates to uh, it being a factor of this polynomial. So let's substitute P of negative five on three into our polynomial, see what we get. Three times negative five on three cubed plus eight times negative five on three squared plus two times negative five on three, nothing, uh, and minus five at the end. Right, so let's do this. So we'll have three times, all right, negative five cubed is negative five times negative five times negative five, it's negative 125. And three cubed is nine, no, sorry, 27, what am I doing? Right, next we've got eight times negative five squared, which is 25, and three squared, which is nine, 
plus, we can expand this one directly. So two times negative five, so that would be negative 10. So I'll change that to a minus. So it'd be minus 10 over, it stays as a three. And at the end there, we've got five. All right, let's continue expanding these. So three times this fraction. Well, I just will um, reduce the fraction as so. So the three goes into 27 nine times. So I'm left with negative 125 over nine. This one here, so eight times 25 is 200. So I've got 200 over nine, can't reduce that fraction. I'll change this 10 over three into a fraction with a denominator of nine, since we have to add them all at the end. So that will be 30 over nine. And same thing with the five. The five will turn into 45 over nine because 45 divided by nine is five. And finally, we can add all of these fractions together and we'll do it in the following way. We'll start with the 200 over nine because it's positive. So 200 minus 125 is 75 minus 30 is, what's that? 45, and then minus 45 gives you zero. So you do in fact get zero as a remainder. Now, let's think of the values of alpha and beta that we've put in here, okay? Um, technically, if we're saying that we've substituted negative five over three into our polynomial, then that means beta is three and alpha is Five. And so if we're looking for, poly, uh, looking for factors of the form beta x plus alpha, then we can say that 3x plus 5 is a factor. Okay? Now, if you were to go through this list and do it for every single one of these possibilities, it would take you ages. So these questions are not going to pop up that often, but it is in your study design. You do need to understand how to generate this list of fractions. Um, and whether or not you're supplied with a question, all you have to do is check, does that fraction give me a remainder of zero when I do my remainder theorem? If it does, then you can translate that into a factor and say, yep, that is a factor of my polynomial. Okay, so that's a rational root theorem. We're only going to do one question on that because that's all it really can be used for in conjunction with um, the factor theorem as well. Okay, so we'll stop there and that's it. I'll see you next time.